The Lord be with you. Good morning, welcome to worship wherever you are and however you are joining in worship today. Thank you to our worship leaders and the media volunteers who are here this morning in the sanctuary, including Jim Lenway, who is providing special music today. Sunday School is on Zoom this morning at 10 o'clock. You can contact DJ Chatelaine uh, with questions or the Zoom link, or if your family would like an alternative Sunday School option. The youth and family team are planning for activities and events in person this summer for children, youth, and family. Uh, to help support these events, the team is sponsoring a hanging basket sale. Orders are due by April 1st. Midweek Lenten worship will be broadcast this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. on KDHL 920 a.m. and it will be streamed on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, bulletins for the entire series and Hold an Evening Prayer booklets are available outside the church, uh, outside the front doors of the church that you can pick that up. The sermon series this year is called God Knows and God Cares. This week, the topic is God Knows That We Get Lonely and God Cares. The Food Shelf Challenge is underway. The goal is to raise over $4,050 between now and Palm Sunday. Uh, only cash donations are being accepted this year. Checks can be made out to First English with food in the memo line. Funds raised will go to the new food shelf here in Fairbo, the food, Fairbo Food Access Initiative. And a portion of the money raised will also go to, to support our Synod's 40 Together campaign for COVID relief for our partners in Tanzania, Colombia, and for families at the U.S.-Mexico border. We thank you for your gifts this Lent. Contact Pastor Kerry for a link to join the Courageous Conversations Bible Study taking place on Mondays in March at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. The next session is tomorrow evening at 7. And contact the church office for a link to Tuesday's new, noon Bible study. All are welcome uh, at these Bible studies. There have been a few gremlins with our emails uh, with church, so you, be sure to check your spam files for emails from church if you think you haven't received one. Thank you to everyone who volunteered to help with the Red Cross blood drive on Friday. In a few minutes, we will have the installation of the 2021 Church Council. Uh, and before we do that, the new Church Council President, Rick Rost, is here today in the sanctuary to bring a greeting uh, and to bring some updates. Rick. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the council, I'd like to take this time to thank you for your continued faithfulness in support of First English during these difficult times. We are grateful for your support of and participation in our online and radio ministries, and we are so thankful for those that produce them for us. We're appreciative of any words and notes of kindness you have shared with church staff, ministry teams, or fellow members. We're thankful for the prayers that you have offered up for our congregation and for an end to the pandemic and a safe return to in-person in worship. And behalf of the council and the stewardship ministry team, we're so thankful for the generous financial commitment you've made to continue our work in Christ. We were able to retire our building debt in January, enabling us to direct funds to other budget needs as you know, per the congregation's wishes, we are now fully staffed for the first time in several years. This, of course, requires a significant increase in our budget, which was approved by the congregation at our annual meeting in January. We are op optimistic that by the grace of God and your continued generosity, we will meet this commitment. So far, despite the challenging circumstances, your response has been very positive. The final count during our pledge drive was the best in several years. Many of you have been blessed to maintain a steady income and responded by increasing your giving or perhaps felt moved to donate a, a portion of your stimulus check. If you have not been as fortunate, we, we, we pray for a return to normalcy and are grateful for anything you do for our church. Finally, I also serve as the chair of the Safe at Church Task Force and would like to speak on their behalf. We have been meeting since early July to come up with a plan 
to return to in-person worship safely. We are currently working with church staff on plans to return this spring. This seems very likely if the infection rates continue to decline and as the vaccination rates increase. It will not be quite like it was before last March, but it will be a start and I promise it will be a moving experience to be back in our beautiful sanctuary here. So watch for information in the announcements, the bi-weekly update, and online. Thank you again for all you do, even during a pandemic, to support our church. Just as this week's beautiful weather has given us a renewed positive outlook for the warmer days ahead, we look with optimism, hope, and faith to the future of First English and how we can serve our members, our community, and ultimately our Lord. And we are going to do it uh, in person very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. If you'd like to make a contribution to the congregation's ministries, you are welcome to send a check to the church office. You can give a sustaining gift by setting up an automatic uh, withdrawal from your bank account or a credit card, or you can give electronically by going to the church website, firstenglishfairbo.org. In prayers today, we remember Ruth Lilquist, who is hospitalized, and we remember the family and friends of Bob Huggins. Bob was the son-in-law of Delphine Charlton. Bob died in Arkansas after an extended illness. The peace of the risen Christ be with the Huggins family and all those who mourn today. We continue this morning with the installation of the 2021 Church Council. The per first part of this uh, recording, those of you watching on Facebook will see it, those listening on the radio, this was recorded at the Church Council meeting in February. The following persons have been elected to positions of leadership on the church council. We give thanks for their willingness to serve First English in this capacity. Rick Rost, President. Judy Covert, Vice President. Ruth Lilquist, Past President. John Wyruth, Secretary. Alex Salmon, Treasurer. Mary Isaacson, Council Member at Large. Teresa Ennis, Cassie Gerbig, Rick Schwartz, and Amy Williamson. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Your leaders. You have been elected to positions of leadership and responsibility in this congregation. You are called to help lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation, bearing witness to God's love. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, and service, and in conversation, decision-making, and support, so that the mission of Christ's love might be carried out in this congregation, in this community, in the wider church, and throughout the whole world. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, and strive to encourage peace, harmony, and mutual understanding. Will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices and responsibilities to which you have been elected? If so, answer together, we will, and we will, ask God, and to, we help ask God to help and help guide us. We will, we will and we ask God, God to help and guide us. us. I ask you, Will you support these elected leaders? Will you pray for them? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help and guide us. We will, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for calling us to be the church in this time and place. Send your spirit to fill us with faith and to guide us as we follow Christ and join in your mission of proclaiming the kingdom in word and deed. Help the church council and all of us to discern your will for the ministry at First English and give us wisdom and compassion to respond to the needs of our neighbors. We thank you for these leaders who will serve on church council and for all who serve in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. 
Council members, you are now installed as the 2021 First English Church Council. Thank you for your service. God bless you and your and God bless you and be with you in your work and service on behalf of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the mission that we share together. Now I just encourage everyone wherever you are to clap for the council and thank them for their service. Thank you church council. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our opening hymn is Built on a Rock.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound was saved, a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see so clearly hallelujah grace like rain falls down on me hallelujah all my stains are washed away are washed away Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first relieved. Hallelujah, grace like rain falls down on me. Hallelujah, all my stains are washed away, are washed away. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing your praise than when we'd first begun. Hallelujah, grace like rain falls down on me. Hallelujah, all my stains are washed away, washed away. Hallelujah, all my rain falls down on me. Hallelujah, all my stains are washed away. Are washed away. The first reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 20. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. 
You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul writes, The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jew, Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, 
And will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from the one who creates us, who redeems us, and who inspires us. Amen. So we have a lot to cover today, and I am diving right in. The scene that we just heard from the Gospel of John is often referred to as the cleansing of the temple, and it appears in all four Gospels. Jesus comes to the temple in Jerusalem near the time of Passover, the Jewish celebration that commemorates when the Holy Spirit passed over the houses in Egypt of those who were Israelites, when the last plague was occurring, which saved their firstborn children from being killed. During this plague, the Israelite slaves marked their doors with the blood of a lamb, ensuring their homes would be passed over during the plague. It was after this tenth and final plague that the Israelite slaves were set free from Pharaoh. And to celebrate Passover, Jews made sacrifices to God in the temple. These sacrifices were made in the one temple that was in Jerusalem. And so it makes sense that there would be animals available there to purchase for sacrifice. It was a necessary convenience. Perhaps you had traveled a long way and couldn't bring an animal with you. Perhaps you did not own animals and in, in, indeed needed to purchase one. This allowed for people to celebrate in the way that they always had before, to continue to worship with sacrifice. It allowed for people to make sacrifices to God, and money changers were also helpful to have at the temple so that people had correct currency to use in donations. And so on that day when Jesus came to the temple, there were people selling animals for sacrifice, and there were money changers exchanging money. It was business as usual. So I'm sure people were a bit surprised when Jesus came, made a whip of cords, drove all of the animals out of the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers, spilling their coins everywhere. Now, often when I think of this story, I think of that scene in Jesus Christ Superstar, a wonderful musical, if you haven't seen it already, where Jesus, in his Steven Tyler-esque, gravelly yet high-pitched voice, cries out, quote, my house should be a my temple should be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he then screams for everyone to get out. And indeed, this language is present in the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In those accounts, Jesus criticizes the people who were selling the animals in the temple and calling them thieves or robbers. And perhaps the people who were selling these items or exchanging money were taking advantage of this time, knowing that people needed animals and needed their money exchanged, and they were the ones in the business that could set the price, whether it was fair or otherwise. But I think it's important to note that Jesus does not call anyone in the temple a thief or a robber in John's account. Jesus isn't angry at the way that people are selling things or whether they are taking advantage people, of people or not, Jesus is upset at the entire system. Jesus' complaint here is that the temple has been made into a marketplace, fair or otherwise. It seems that Jesus has noticed this shift from the temple being a place of prayer and worship to being a place of commerce. Rather than being centered on the practice of worship, it has become centered on buying and selling. What started as a gift from God, a passing over of homes, the safety of God's people, and the celebration of that day, had turned into being about the business of humans making money. Jesus then makes this curious comment, which the disciples only understand after his death, that the temple will be destroyed and then raised in three days. While the people there are, think, are thinking that Jesus is speaking of the temple around them 
and are therefore confused about how such a thing could be done. John tells us that Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. The physical temple has been equated to Jesus' body. It seems to me that Jesus is stating that this system is no longer working. And so God has created something new. The temple is no longer a building in a certain location that you must travel to, but resides in the body of Christ. God changed the system. God comes to earth embodied in Jesus and changes humanity's relationship with God. No longer will God only be accessible in the temple and no longer will sacrifices need to be made to communicate with God. God has come to earth and things have changed. And this is what God does. God changes systems and God renews God's relationship with humanity. The passage we heard from Exodus today was the laying out of the Ten Commandments. And I think many of us are probably familiar with these Ten Commandments. We tend to learn them as the rules to follow. After all, they sound a lot like rules, what with you shall have no other gods before me, you shall not murder, and you shall not steal being among them. And some of these commandments have become laws that we follow today, or else we are punished. But I think we miss something if we only think of these as being rules to follow, or 10 steps to success, or 10 guidelines for a perfect life or a perfect faith life. We miss something when we think of them as rules that if broken will lead to punishment or wrath from God. I think we miss these things when we pull them out of their context. Because these rules, these guidelines were given to a group of people who were recently freed from slavery. To a group of people who are creating a new community. To people who are figuring out what life looks like with their newfound freedom. And so while these may be rules, they are also gifts. God gives the recently freed Israelite slaves the freedom to worship the one who brought them out of slavery and lays out boundaries to ensure a continued relationship with God, and one that God wants to continue for many, many generations. God invites them all to a day of rest, and can you imagine living under slavery, living your whole life working every single day under the, under the law of slavery, and then be told you must take a day of rest? Can you imagine how that would land on your ears? After working every day under harsh rule, how can this feel like a law? They are told they must rest and cannot work, and that this gift of rest is given to everyone, even children's, even children's servants, animals, and those who are not in the in-group, but foreign residents. And then following this in the Ten Commandments, we have this set of guidelines for community. These are the things that include honoring your parents, not murdering, committing adultery, stealing, bearing false witness, or coveting. I recently heard a scholar speak of these things, and she stated that while these are indeed good rules for a community to be built upon, they are also teaching a deeper lesson. They are teaching a new relationship that people must have with each other, and they are teaching that what they have is enough. You do not need to murder because God will give enough for all to live. You do not need to steal because you have enough. You do not need to tear down the reputation of others because all will have enough love and attention. You do not need to be envious of what others have because you already have enough with you. There was nothing like these rules in the ancient world. Rules that existed then were much more about revenge and payback. These rules given by God were counter to the culture of the time. Rest was unheard of, and violence being rendered unnecessary was probably a very new idea. 
God saw the system that humans created and God changed the broken system. No longer must someone work every day of their lives. No longer would hurtful acts be tolerated. No longer would God's people not have a relationship with God. Just like Jesus with overturning the tables and overturning the religious system to create a new relationship and a new way of life and worship, God overturned the relationship God would have with God's people and the relationship God's people would have with each other by giving them the Ten Commandments. God brought a new way of life and of freedom to God's people, freedom to rest, to be safe, and to realize and remember that they have enough. This is what God does. God breaks into our world and shows us a better way to live. God sees our broken systems and breaks them, flipping over tables if he has to do so. God continues to reach out to us to ensure a relationship with us, a relationship that is free from payment, a relationship that is free from other false gods, a relationship that changes our lives and our world. In a few weeks, we will remember when God once again overturned God's relationship with humanity as God dies on a cross. God will experience pain and death and overcome death's power. God will bring about a new relationship with his people. God will overturn the system of death and create new life out of it. God will no longer work in a system of laws, but instead bestow incredible, unbelievable grace upon everyone. God's relationship will not be dependent on the following of commandments, but will be given as a gift to us all. This is what continues to give me hope in a world where it seems that our systems are broken, where some are given too much while others receive too little. In this place and time where some live in lavish luxury while others are hungry, where some are able to walk through this life a bit safer and a bit easier because of the color of their skin or gender identity or social status. We have a God who sees injustice and breaks in, reminding us all that just as we are, we are so loved, and that there is indeed enough for everyone if distributed fairly and justly, and that God is the one we worship and follow. And when we are the ones who perpetrate injustice or work a system to our advantage, to the disadvantage of others, God still loves us. That God will continue to love us even as God breaks down the systems that may bring us comfort, but leave others in harm's way. So may we look for the ways that God is breaking into our world, and may we see the ways God is changing it. May we follow the Holy Spirit into ventures where we cannot see the ending, trusting that God is bringing us to new life. May we remember that whatever happens, God remains faithful to us, seeks relationship with us, and never leaves us. And may we sing out in the face of a broken world and frail human systems with defiant hope that God is about to overturn it all. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day, Canticle of the Turning.
with the whole church we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the promises of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Let us pray. Dear God, there is no God but you. Give us faith and deepen our trust in your promises. Guide your church. Help us to follow Christ in the world, that in every situation our words and actions would honor your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, the heavens and the earth declare your glory. We give you thanks for the sun and warmth of these days. As you sustain creation, help us to care for all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you have gathered the people into nations. Help our nation and every nation of the world to create societies that are just, communities that are thriving and welcoming, and a system of justice that protects the well-being of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, protect those who are vulnerable. Give courage to all who are suffering or who are afraid or worried today. Be near to those who are in prison. Help those who are living with addiction. We pray for those who are sick or who are injured or who are recovering, including this morning John Keller and Ruth Lilquist. We pray for those with ongoing health concerns, including Cindy Barda, Dorothy Bauer, Beth Busta, Elaine Deming, and others we remember silently now before you in our hearts. God, we continue to pray for the vaccination effort underway and for all those who continue to serve our community during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we remember those we love who are now at rest in your eternal care. Comfort those who mourn today, especially the family and friends of Bob Huggins. Give the Huggins family your peace and strengthen them and all of us through your spirit as our walk of faith continues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust our prayers and our lives to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
run in the darkness, seek out the lonely, the tired and worn. Hold out your candle for all to see. Take your candle and go light the world. Take your candle and go light the world. are blazing let's raise the candle and light the sky praying to our father in the name of jesus make us a beacon in the darkest time so light your candle run to the darkness seek out the hopeless confused and torn hold out your candle for all to see take your candle go light our world take your candle go light our world Let us pray together. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Our sending hymn is God of grace and God of glory.
Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.